My name's Ramon Michellan. I'm a psychiatrist that works with the neuropsychiatry unit here at Royal Melbourne Hospital. I've been interested in um, using technology for education and clinical purposes for a long time. So performing neurological and psychiatric assessments on people sometimes um, requires an assessment of relatively subtle changes in people's facial expressions and their posture. And some of those things are not easily picked up in sort of flat two-dimensional aspects. Secondly, if the, um, the definition of the pictures are better, then facial expression and, and subtle changes are more obvious as well. If uh, the clinician in Shepparton would like an opinion from the clinicians in our unit here in Melbourne, then we can, I mean, doing any kind of clinical assessment is a form of data gathering, and as clear as that data is, the best um, advice we can give people. So we're hoping that with this um, technology that the interview of the individual patient or the person with the difficulty is much clearer than either uh, an interview done without vision or standard video telemetry. In remote areas, accessing a medical review or a medical opinion um, can be difficult but also just accessing um, the sort of things that someone might get if they're in, a, in an urban area. For example, getting psychological support apart from just medical or psychiatric support, having a face-to-face -face discussion about um, more simple, basic, but very important practical things like housing and finance assistance. And um, I think people are often much more comfortable talking face-to-face -face than they are on the telephone. And then lastly, um, it's a way that all the practitioners can learn from each other as well. So in particular where all those things are difficult to access. So as an example, in this hospital it's very easy to attend tutorials, lectures, etc. if you want to learn about different things irrespective of whether you're a medical or non-medical person. But in rural centres that's very difficult. Dr. Alvin Hart, what do you wish to Oh, Richard, uh, I understand that you've been having some problems, uh, some difficulties in walking. That is true, yes. Can you um, tell me a bit of what's happening? I can. I, I, find it, I find it very difficult to, uh, to initiate walking. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that I often come to a stop and then cannot move mm -hmm. further. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm concerned about this because uh, often it may occur uh, at an intersection. Yeah. And traffic is uh, bearing down upon me. Oh. Have you had any falls? Uh, I fall, uh, yes, I have had some falls. Uh, uh, concussion most recently. Uh, also, all a consequence, I think, of this problem with gait. Oh. I find it difficult to pick up my feet on escalators, uh, staircases, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So, when did this start? Richard? When did the the gate problem start. Yeah. I think about uh, five years ago I started to notice it. Um, I am now 60 years old, mm -hmm. so perhaps when I was 55, I don't know whether that's early yeah. onset, but um, that's about the, that's the time length. It's, it's progressively worsened. Okay, that's it. I want you to put your arms in front and spread your fingers. Do you mind just shutting your eyes? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Were you able to see the channel? I was, yes, thank you. So Richard, while you're writing there, can you, can you control the tremor or is it really something you, there's not much you can do I about? I to be able to control it a little better whilst writing. Mm -hmm. um, when I stop writing it, 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 it returns. Could you do something for me and that is just hold the pen between your thumb and forefinger and just hold it up, pointing the, the tip of the pen to the roof. Just like that, yeah, that's good. So put your hands up like this for me, please, and bring them together quickly like that. And now as fast as you can, fast as you can, really fast. Very good, okay, relax now. And with the left, if you hold up your left hand, and if you can do this for me, And keep going as fast as you can, Richard, please. Very good, okay, thank you. Now try the same with the other hand.
Good, thank you. Are you left-handed or right-handed, Richard? Left-handed. Okay, good. What should I be looking for? Well, I guess um, sometimes there's no tremor and sometimes there's not much um, rigidity, but sometimes repetitive movement control and fine movement control brings out either the tremor or they're slowed down. So it's a sensitive measure of bradykinesia as well. Um, and unfortunately, usually on video, looking at these things are often quite hard to measure the speed. Whereas today, we've been, it's, it's quite clear. Mm. Um, high resolution gives you, especially in a clinical setting, in a general clinical setting, gives you obviously a much better appreciation of, of patient movement, patient appearance. Um, and I, my, having, having seen uh, the 3D cameras that were then appearing on the market and the 3D televisions, I must say I made an assumption that this would lead to a better experience as far as teleconferencing is concerned. And I think it has. It's a pity to choose up um, two channels of a Cisco, but I think it works very well. And we have certainly done what we achieved to do in the project, which, which was to prove the concept. Uh, now, if we want to go on, we have to deal with things like um, making the technology more simple, uh, certainly less expensive, and um, to work on right bandwidth. Um, so we have a Cisco C60 codec. Um, it's a standard enterprise video conferencing system. Um, it has multiple channels, it can run up to 30 frames per second. Um, we're using that over a high bandwidth link from out of the hospital into the University of Melbourne then up to Shepparton. Um, the units um, run at about 6 megabits per second um, per video stream and um, we're basically tricking it in thinking that it's um, the 3D image we're sending is actually a 2D image. This is commonly the units that we put in a, like a boardroom um, where you, have, you link your two boardrooms in Melbourne or Sydney or across the world and you can have an interactive two-way conversation and high quality and high, high reliability vision. Uh, the audio system's full two-way, full duplex, so um, in this scenario it gives us a case where the clinician and the patient can actually have a conversation and override each other and not get audio clipping or one in, one out. 3D multi-point, multi-way conferences shouldn't be that difficult. Um, if you're just doing, right now we could do it if you're doing full frame swatch, switching. So if you're taking one entire frame then switching to another entire frame of a different, so if you're going who's the speaker is led by a point. Um, what we can't do at the moment is go into a bridge um, that shows uh, multi-person because then you just end up with a whole heap of split images. This won't be a replacement for a face-to-face -face physical assessment. But um, certainly it can be the starting point and it can be a guiding point for those who can do that closer by to do that. It's very useful also as a teaching tool as well. So in the context of people doing face-to-face -face usual assessments, this can be used as a teaching tool um, from a distance to help people do that more effectively and more accurately. And I, I've worked in rural centres before where um, the ability to, to run education sessions um, in the area where the people are working rather than those people travelling to another centre is highly advantageous and it's more engaging for those involved as well. So we're hoping that we can give them accurate and um, you know, uh, informed opinions about uh, the things they're asking us to do.